So we can amplify a single input just like any other amplifier of a single signal. But what about multiple inputs? Well, first, what do we mean by having multiple inputs? What's the operation? Because you can add, subtract, compare, do all these other things. Today, we're going to add. Why would we want to add multiple signals? One reason is, let's say you have a device, a measuring device, like a scale. Let's say you want to measure out three grams of a particular chemical. So you put your empty beaker on the scale and you press the button that says tear, T-A-R-E. And what that does is it says whatever weight, whatever mass is on there now, that is zero. So you can then just put your chemical in until it reads three. And it's a nice exact way, as exact as you can get, for measuring something like that. So you could have a voltage signal, which is what the sensor is measuring as the mass, and then you have a second voltage, which is your calibration voltage. So you could have circuitry in there. Whenever the user presses the tear button, it takes the voltage from the sensor and puts that as the voltage for the calibration. It just stores that voltage somehow. And then when you're measuring, you have the voltage for the weight, and then you remove the voltage previously recorded to get down to the zero voltage. Another option would be analog logic, or functions and functions. Let's say you have two or multiple sensors, like you have multiple byproducts of a chemical reaction that you want to make sure none of the outputs of those get too high, your little waste baskets. So you could say, add all the sensors together of all the byproducts, and if the sum gets too high, we need to go and clean it out because something's going wrong and there's extra tar being produced. You know, combine them, and if combined, they're over a threshold. There's many uses. Now, I'm going to use the inverting version of the amplifier for this, and I'll explain why later. For now, it's an incredibly easy setup. So let's begin with the inverting amplifier. Our voltage in and its resistor into the inverting input, then the feedback resistor to V out, and your zero into the non-inverting input. So that's the one input version. Let's change V in to V1, V1. Now let's say we also have V2 and V3. How do we add those in? Very simple, extra resistors. They're the same value, R in and R in. Hook the voltages into those and just connect it to the same point. We literally just add the inputs in the same as it was, and there's the junction. This is still going to be zero, because we've got zero here, and the feedback is going to make this a zero summing point. This is the first reason that the inverting version is better for a multi-input setup. This being zero here means that these inputs are effectively isolated from each other. If V whatever is higher than zero, then current is going to flow out of it, as you would expect. If V whatever is negative, then current is going to flow into it, as you would expect, because this is zero. Well, a sliver off of zero. It's close enough to zero to make it not matter. So it behaves as if it's just in the circuit ground in the first place. So there's not really feedback into each of these inputs from other inputs. If we were to flip this and to make the non-inverting version, you can make the non-inverting version. You do just like before. You take this zero and you put it here instead, and you take all of this and you put it here instead. So just like before the summing point became V in, now the summing point becomes the sum of the voltages. But that's the problem, is as the voltages change, their sum changes, which means the summing point changes. So the voltages start affecting each other if you use the non-inverting version. This introduces noise and resonance and all kinds of other stuff I only half understand, but it basically makes it less stable. So this works exactly as the inverting amplifier does. You can watch that video if you need an explanation. It just has multiple inputs, and the result, the result is the sum of these voltages times a gain. Now, we write gain as V out over V in, the ratio, but we can't write that this time because there's not just one V in. So there's not one gain when we define it like this. But let me show you what the formula actually is. For the three input version, V out equals minus R out divided by R in times V1 plus V2 plus V3. This should look familiar to you. If we just look at this minus R out over R in, that is the gain of the single input inverting amplifier. We're multiplying that gain into the sum of the voltages to get the voltage out. So 
the same gain for the single input version is behaving as if it's the gain here. Essentially, you have the same thing. You have the sum of the voltages times that, which we could consider the gain, equals V out. Now, you might say this is pedantic, but the reason I'm emphasizing this is because we specifically define A, the gain, is V out over V in. So it would be V out divided by V1 plus V2 plus V3. So it makes sense V in would be technically the sum of these. I'm just making sure to write it like this and emphasize I'm not writing A equals to avoid confusion. Conceptually, it is the same thing. It's V out divided by the V in sum. But I don't want to use the same variable name in a different way. I want A equals V out over V in to always be the case. But essentially, this circuit is exactly the same as the inverting amplifier. You just add more inputs and the sum is multiplied by the gain. And that's really all there is to discuss. So now let's do the math. So I'll do this just like before. It's a voltage divider. Because we assume the current into the differential amplifier, the operational amplifier, is zero. It's not zero, but we assume it is, and then we get close enough. So we have V1, V2, and V3. Those three resistors, the summing point, the out resistor, and these all connect through like that to V out. So we assume the only current through this point is in the voltage divider. So your first thought would be this is parallel resistance. Let me write the R names. R in, R in, R in, and R out. So your first thought would be to do the parallel resistance formula we already know, but these voltages aren't the same. The parallel resistance formula only applies when you're applying the same voltage. So instead, we're again going to do what we did before. We are assuming the currents are the same through all of this. So we've got I1, I2, and I3. We assume they're all going to the right. It doesn't matter whether it's going to the right or not. If V3 is negative 5 and this is 0, then it's going that way, but that just means it's negative. You pick a direction, all that does is define which way is positive. It doesn't have to actually be going that way, it just means if it's going that way, the number is positive. So then, over here, we'll say I. The current here is the sum of the currents to all these parts. So we can say I equals I1 plus I2 plus I3. Well, I, and we'll say once again, this is zero volts. So I equals I1 plus I2 plus I3. So I is zero minus V out over R out, just like before. But that equals the sum. I1 is V1 minus zero over R in, plus I2, V2 minus zero over R in, plus V3 minus zero over R in. So all of these something minus zero just becomes that thing. And then zero minus V out is negative V out. But now look at what we have. We can separate out this R in. I can take this whole thing times one over R in, and now we just have the sum of the voltages in here. It's just the reverse of distributing a multiplication. See, the one over R in is here instead of there. Then I multiply over R out and I'll put it over here. So we have R out over here, instead of over here, I multiplied it over, and then you can say multiply over, divide over, minus one, it's the same thing. Bring the negative over here. Negative R out instead of over here. And there it is. V out equals negative R out over R in times the sum of the voltages, just like I said. So negative R out over R in is essentially your gain. All of these resistors are the same value. They don't have to be, that's the next video. But here, we're simply summing. So the math, actually the math was easier technically, but it took a little bit of extra step. But you essentially just pick your gain, just like before. You pick your R out and R in to get your gain. The negative means it's inverting, and then your gain is applied to the sum of the voltages. So, how do you pick your gain? Well, you could say, what is the highest any of these voltages will be? What is the maximum sum? And then you say, okay, the maximum output I want is going to be whatever. So that's the gain you apply. Like if you have, let's say the sum can only ever be plus or minus three. So you want a maximum of six volts out, 
plus or minus six, so you multiply your gain would be two. Because if the voltages are their maximum, plus or minus three times two would be plus or minus six. So you set it for the limit of whatever the next stage is so you don't overvolt it. Or you could pick the mean or median, some common expected value. You can even pick an idle value if you want. Basically just think about what your signals are, think about how they behave across all the different possible inputs, and then you can pick your gain from that. And if you're just not sure, if you want to handle all possibilities, then what you do is you just have your next stage be able to handle a large voltage swing, much larger than you think you could possibly get in, and then stick a couple Zener diodes or whatever to make sure it never overvolts. That's another topic for a future video, overvolt protection. But that's all it is. Think of this still as your gain, even though I don't say A equals. So that's how you add voltages through the operational amplifier, with the benefit of having them isolated from each other. And you can see that the voltage in, the voltages, are completely separate from the gain. So let's say you can plug and unplug these, not even with pull up or pull down resistors, but you can physically plug and unplug these. It doesn't matter if you unplug one or add a fourth one or whatever, the gain is not gonna change. The sum will, so if you plug in too many, you might overvolt it, but you know, you wouldn't have more ports than you could handle. You would just have to plan ahead. So that's another benefit of using this version is the signals are completely separate from each other in that their values don't matter to each other, but also their presence doesn't matter to each other. You just have a gain and it stays stable. So next time, we'll see what happens if we have different resistor values. Essentially, what happens if we value one signal more than another? If one signal has a higher weight than another? Until then, I'll be seeing you.